Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Bongani Tumelo Sibego. This is Life Sciences Grade 12. Today we are going to discuss the human ear. Before we start with our lesson, I'll remind you guys to not forget to subscribe if you are new to the channel. Don't forget to like as well. Don't forget to, to share the video to others. And last but not least, don't forget to comment down below if there's some clarity or if you've got questions. Now, starting with our lesson plan. So what are we going to discuss today? We are going to discuss the structure of the human ear, the parts of the ear, which is the outer, the middle, and the inner ear. And we're going to look at the functioning of the, the human ear. Here, we're going to look at balance and hearing. And last but not least, we're going to look at the hearing defects. Okay, now, starting with the structure of the, of the human ear. The human ear is made up of three parts. It is made up of the outer, the middle, and the inner, inner ear. Okay, I have a proper diagram. Yes, this is the proper diagram, which is on your screen. The outer ear, which is your A, it consists of three parts. The pina, the tympanum, which is the eardrum, as well as the ear carnal which is also known as the auditory corner. And then your middle ear, which is your B on the screen, it consists of the ossicles, which are the smallest bones in your body, which are found in your, in your ear. We have got three of them. We have got the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. And also it consists of the eustachian tube. Okay, looking at the inner ear. The inner ear consists of the oval and the round windows. It consists of also the semicircular or the semi, let me say semi, the semicircular canals. They are semicircular, as you can see, they are shaped, they are named because of the shape. They are semicircular. Okay. And then we've got the circulars and the utriculars. We have also the auditory nerve and the, the cochlea. Cochlea is the snail shaped part of the of the the ear that you can see here this one here okay now starting with this part starting with the parts of the outer ear we need to know the functions now looking at each function for each part of the ear now starting with the pina which sometimes is called the oracle but at your level it's called pina it's okay to make it simple now the pina the external part of the ear or the outer part of the ear. What it does, it traps sound waves and then it sends them to the ear canal or the auditory canal. And then the auditor, the auditory canal or the ear canal, what it does, it sends or transmits the, those sound waves it received from the pina to, to the eardrum which is also referred to as the tympanic membrane or tympanum. And then the eardrum, what it does is to transmit the sound waves to, to the middle ear or to the ossicles. Now let us look at the, the middle ear. So the ossicles, they, what? they get the sound from the eardrum, right? And then they vibrate as they get the sound waves from the eardrum and then they amplify it okay and then the other part of the middle ear is the Houston shen tube which equalizes the pressure between the air outside the ear and within the middle ear now looking at the parts of the inner ear we have got the, the oval window the oval window what it does is to transmit those sound waves from the middle ear to the inner to the inner ear, right? And then we've got the round window. The round window is responsible for releasing the pressure from the, the inner ear. And then we've got the semicircular canals. They are responsible for balance, you know? They make you balance properly, okay? Together with the circulars and the uterine, they're responsible for balance. And then we've got the 
cochlea, the snail-shaped part. Okay, this cochlea, it contains what we call the organ of Corti, which converts the sound waves into the nerve impulse. And then the nerve impulse then is transmitted to the brain using the auditory nerve. So that's the function of the auditory nerve to transmit the impulses it gets from the, from the cochlear tube to the brain for interpretation. Now, how do you hear? Okay, what you see on your screen is very complicated. I believe it's a lot of things, but I'll try by all means to simplify things. Now, if you have seen all these parts of the ear, we looked at the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. So the sound travels like that. It starts from the outer ear to the middle ear and then to the inner ear. Now, as I've told you guys, the pinna will trap what the sound waves and it sends them to to the auditory canal. And then the auditory canal, it takes those sound waves and then it sends them to, to the eardrum. And then those sound waves, as they approach the eardrum, they will hit against it or they will strike what against the eardrum, making it to, to vibrate, right? And then as the eardrum vibrates, what it does, it transmits those vibrations or those sound waves to, to the ossicles, you know, your hammer, your anvil, and your stirrup. And then... As these ossicles vibrate, they will amplify the sound or the vibrations. They will amplify the sound or the vibrations. Right. And then why do we need the, the vibrations to be amplified? I'll explain when we get to the cochlea. Right. And then as these ossicles vibrate and amplify the sound, they transmit the sound to, to the oval window or the vibrations to, to the oval window. Now, because the oval window is smaller in size than the, the eardrum, so as a result, the pressure is increased even further to cause the sounds to be amplified even further as well. Why? I told you, I'll explain when we get to, to the cochlea. Now, the vibrating oval window causes the pressure waves to travel through the cochlea, or it causes the pressure waves to travel to the cochlea. Right. Remember, I said to the last time when you look at the functions of each part of the ear, when we go to the cochlea, I said the cochlea, it consists of or it contains what we call the organ of cochlea. Right. So the organ of court is responsible for, for converting what the sound waves into or the vibrations into a nerve impulse or an electrical impulse, right? So the electrical impulse after being converted, sorry, the, the sound waves, they after being converted to electrical impulse or nerve impulse, then they are transmitted to or transported to to the auditory nerve and then the auditory nerve will transmit those impulses to to the cerebrum specifically cerebrum which is a part of the brain for interpretation that's how you hear also the pressure waves in the cochlea are absorbed into the middle ear through the round window and then they exit the body via the the uste shin Tube. They're not supposed to stay, they're supposed to exit. Okay, now I want to explain why do we need the amplification of the, 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 the vibrations or the sound waves. They're important because the snail-shaped part of, the, of, of your ear, which is what we call the cochlea, it contains um, a fluid, right? So in order to make that fluid inside the cochlea to vibrate we need more pressure hence the vibrations are amplified or hence the sound waves they are amplified in order to move the liquid inside the cochlea right and then as the liquid or the fluid inside the cochlea moves it causes further vibrations and then those vibrations 
in the cochlea, they will be converted into a an electrical impulse, which then will be taken to the brain for interpretation through the auditory nerve. Now, let us look at the diagram that shows how the sound waves travel. You see, they start from the, the pina through the auditory canal, through the eardrum, through the ossicles, from the ossicles to the inner ear or the cochlea, and then from the cochlea to the auditory nerve, and there they go to, to, the, to the brain. That's it. And then we go to balance. How do you balance? Okay, first of all, what is balance? Balance is the process in which receptors in the ear, they detect any changes in the position of your head and respond to the gravity, as well as the changes in speed and direction of your, of your body. Okay, now the ear is responsible for balance in this way. First of all, you need to know that there are two very important structures which are very important when it comes to um, balance. We never talked about them. Okay, these two are what we call the cristae and the maculae. The cristae, they are found within the semi-secular canals and the maculae are found within the circulars and the utriculars. utriculars. That's all that you need to know. Okay, now one, the cristae, you need to know that they are stimulated by the changes in the direction and the speed of movement of the body. But the maculae, they are not stimulated by that. But instead, they are stimulated by the changes in the position of the of the of the head, of, of, of your head. So when these two are stimulated, they convert the stimuli received into nerve impulses. And then those nerve impulses are transported to the cerebellum, not the cerebrum, the cerebellum through the auditory nerve for interpretation. Now the cerebrum, cerebellum, sorry, the cerebellum then sends the impulses to to your muscles or it sends a signal. It tells your muscles what to do in order to restore your balance. Or it tells your muscles to restore, to restore your balance to prevent you from falling because once you fall you will get injured okay now let us look at um the last part of our lesson which is your hearing defects we are going to look at two of them the first one that we're going to look at is the middle ear infection this infection it occurs when there's excess fluid which builds up in the in your middle ear right so what causes it? It is caused by pathogens or what we call microorganisms. Is this causing microorganisms or microbes, right? Which enter through the eustachian tube. Okay, the fluid cannot drain through the eustachian tube due to the infection from the pathogen, which causes it to become inflamed. So we have got the inflammation there in the middle ear and then now what is the treatment remember the infection leads to the build up of the the fluid right so we need to remove this fluid or remove the infection how do we do that there are two ways you can give antibiotics antibiotics are drugs that will kill the pathogen in that way you are curing the infection or we can give devices, the green device that you see on your screen, which is called the grommets. So these are used for young children. So the grommet, what it does, it will drain the fluid into the ear canal. And then from the ear canal, it goes out. And then in that way, your hearing is restored, right? Because sometimes if you get this infection, it can lead to a complication which is deafness right which is what we're going to discuss next so what is deafness deafness in simple terms it the inability to hear it's either total or partial or total or partial hearing loss and what causes it it is caused by an injury to any part of the ear that we discussed or an injury to the nerve which is also a part of the ear, or it can be 
due to an injury that um, affects your brain or damages your brain, right? Let me make examples. For injuries to the end parts of the ear, maybe the eardrum is, is, is damaged. Therefore, the sound waves won't be transmitted, you see? So the entire process of hearing is disturbed. So hence, you cannot hear or you hear partially, okay? Also, maybe the, 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 the auditory nerve is, is, is affected or damaged. It means now the, the, the nerve impulses won't be transmitted to the brain for interpretation. In that way, the entire process is, is disturbed. You won't be able to hear. Or maybe the part of the brain, which is the cerebrum, maybe it's damaged. Therefore, the interpretation of the sound won't happen. In that case, no hearing or deafness. Or another cause can be hardening of the ear tissues, such as the eardrums. The eardrums, they are not supposed to be very hard because if they are very hard, it means now they won't be able to vibrate and they won't be able to amplify the sound, right? So the treatment for the deafness we give to devices, the hearing aids, which you see on the screen, or the cochlear implants, which they help or they aid in in hearing or they facilitate hearing and that's it for today guys i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you have grasped as much information as possible and thank you for watching the videos don't forget to share don't forget to subscribe if you are new don't forget to like the video and don't forget to to comment down below thank you for watching goodbye